Hey guys, I'm Sarah LaVon and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am no longer in my house, obviously. I am here in a hospital room in labor and delivery and today I'm going to show you how to push in the hospital bed in multiple different pushing positions, why they might be helpful, whether you have an epidural or not. But before I get started, make sure you subscribe down below, give it a like, share it with a friend, and then let's get pushing. So you have labored in bed, you are nice and comfortable, your amazing nurse Justine is gonna come and tuck you in, make sure you're using those pillows throughout your labor to make you more comfortable under your knees, behind your back, on your side. And there are many different positions that you can use to labor down. So before we actually get into pushing, I wanted to give you a little bonus tip here about laboring down. Some providers are fans of laboring down. I'm gonna pause right here and just show you this position real quick because the idea is that you're 10 centimeters dilated, your, your baby may be still kind of high in the pelvis, and so in order to save you and your energy, some providers like you, especially if you have an epidural, if you don't have an epidural, you won't like laboring down if you feel the urge to push. But in general, then those contractions can push the baby lower and lower so that by the time you start pushing, the baby is lower in your pelvis. And so if that's the case, we really wanna use gravity, sit yourself up, maybe get yourself in a squat position. You want our knees together, that'll help open the bottom part of the pelvis. Do your deep labor breathing. You can go to my breathing video and I will show you how to breathe your baby down that can help now if you don't want to labor down that's totally fine um, especially if you don't have an epidural you're just going to push with your urge i'm pulling up the side railings here so that you have some extra bracing support you can use both of these they're not side railings they're little side pull things that you can pull on to help with your pushing or you just relax while you gain your energy for once the time comes for you to push but really the most common position is going to be what we call a lithotomy position. I'll pause here. So if you look at my position, now that it's paused, my neck or my chin is to my chest, my knees are back, I'm grabbing under my knees and I'm using the bed's stirrups to help me to kind of brace myself with my push. Now this is your classic pushing position that providers for years and years and years have taught people to do, they're telling people to do, and what I have done for thousands and thousands of births. Now, is this the most ideal? Is it the most preferable? Is it the best for your pelvic floor? No, it's actually not. Now, it's really great for your provider to be able to visualize the birth, see the baby coming out, but it's not super great for your pelvic floor. Now, the other kind of side note to this is, is that if you have an epidural, it does remove the weight bearing. So if you were to stand on your feet, you'd fall over. And so because you can't stand up or change positions as easily, this is super convenient for how popular epidurals are. So if you have an epidural, it's not the end of the world to push on your back, but ideally we wanna put something under your butt to lift your butt up, allow for movement of your sacrum or your tailbone. And then in, ideally we're going to, I'm gonna replay this video now and see how I adjust. So now naturally I'm moving my knees in and if I pause here, that knees closed position is actually going to help open the bottom part of the pelvis. Now your provider may not be into this at all, but you can talk to your nurse, you can say, hey, I learned this thing. And then the other thing is that to remember that your instinct is everything. If it feels better for you to open your knees and bring them back, ideally we just want feet wider than knees, but honestly this stuff is so instinctive that if it feels right, try it. And if it's working, don't fix what's not broken. That's the other big thing I'm gonna press play here and keep us going but if we if we think about it that like a lot of times this back pushing position really does work now I'm arching my back sometimes that works now if you're in the lithotomy position another option is what we call a tug of war notice I'm pausing again my mouth is open a lot of times when people push they feel like their face is gonna explode because it's like they're pushing all of all the pressure in their face so instead one of my tricks is keep your mouth open as you're bearing down into that pressure. And then this tug of war, I'm literally just looped a sheet under the end of the bed. You can pull that way. Or if I press play, you're gonna see Justine come in in a second and she's gonna pull against me. So this could be a duel, this could be a partner, this could be a nurse, where now we're playing tug of war and that can help focus your energy towards your vagina. And notice, like if you think about it, it's gonna kind of force that pressure down towards your vagina while you're on your back pushing like this. I'm always going to recommend changing pushing positions every about 30 minutes while you're pushing just to switch it up and protect your pelvic floor. Now we're up in a squat position so we can still do tug of war. I'm going to pause. 
here with the tug of war position while I'm in a squat. Now with an epidural, I'm still supported. So if you notice and you can see the little edge of the bed, like right down from my knee where the handlebar is, I'm still sitting. So in theory, I may be supported here even with an epidural to bring me upright into a more squatting position. Now my knees are wider than my feet. Honestly, don't obsess about this guys, but if especially if like you're a nurse or you're really trying to learn this stuff, then ideally that may not work as well. But again, don't fix what's not broken. If I press play, you're gonna see my hands and I say, if I had a squat bar, it would be about right here. And that could help to stabilize you in more of a squatty position. And then of course, if I don't have an epidural, I'm gonna careful, oopsies, censored, <laughs> a little too much hip action there. But if you um, kind of adjust yourself, you can see the edge of the bed is right there. And so I'm using it to sort of lean against, this would be without an epidural. Now this may just feel good for labor. I'm not having to hold on my weight. I'm having like that extra support from the bed, that squat bar that's gonna be in front of me or the handlebars help stabilize me because I don't know about you, it's hard for me to um, hold myself in that position for so long. And partners, we haven't forgotten about you. So a lot of times you may feel kind of out of it, you don't know what to do. So I'm gonna show you a squatty position where you can be involved and actually help support the birthing person here. So the partner would get behind me, like sit thrown-ish. And then I could squat here and actually I am supporting myself, but I have a little bit of stability because of the edge of the bed behind me that I can sort of lean against, but I'm still like pretty much holding my own weight or I can lean back against them, which feels great. My feet are sort of starting to fall asleep, so she may not last long here, uh, but certain cultures, they may end up, like they may squat a lot more, and so that may be normal for them, or if you put your arms under me, you could also kind of like help me by causing some added like lift, so I'm not holding quite as much of my weight, you can, and actually she's swaying me left and right, whereas then I don't have to do the, the most amount of energy. And the goal, of course, is for her to do the least amount of energy possible so she can just focus on coping. So the other squatting option is gonna be actually to turn around on the bed and be very careful to stabilize yourself with the side rails or the little handlebar things here. But I sort of like the idea of like being able to lean on the side of the bed, lean forward, you could always go up and over as well. And then we get to our sideline positions. So our sideline positions are some of my favorite, especially because of how popular the epidural is that many of you may not be able to squat. And a lot of people, honestly, they envision themselves squatting, but it doesn't really end up happening when they're pushing. More often, they're either on their back or on their side. And so there's so many different sideline positions. Even if you were to just twist your hip a little bit, every so often, that's gonna change the dimensions of your pelvis and help with those pressure points on your hips. So what you see here, and I've paused myself because this clip isn't very long, but you're gonna see the stirrup on the side. So see that purple thing hanging up? That's where you could lay your leg between contractions to rest. And then when the contraction comes, you're gonna bring the legs back and un hold under your knees and then push down that way, especially if you're trying to rotate a, a baby one direction or the other, this can be really helpful. And then it also allows for mobility, I'll pause here, mobility on your of your sacrum or for the sacrum to move out of the way, which is like where your tailbone is, it creates more space for baby to come down and out just like we like it. The other thing I'm gonna show you here is what's called a closed knee pushing. This is the new trend. And so if we pause here and look at where my knee is, I'm resting my foot knowing that my knees are closer together with my feet wider and that would be one way that you could do a closed knee pushing on your side. Now we get to my personal favorite for those that don't have an epidural and even those that do have an epidural is an all fours pushing position. If you talk to a pelvic floor therapist, if you talk to Anybody who is more physiologic, they're gonna encourage mothers to push on all fours if you have the, the capability to do so. And that's because it allows for full movement of the sacrum. It allows for you to be able to move and help bring this baby down. It allows for gravity to help. You can do the whole closed knee pushing thing. Notice how I'm leaning down on my feet here. And then if I bring my knees together, that's an easy way I can grab on the side railings and really push that way. Naturally, when you're pushing, you're likely gonna wanna arch your back so that you like pop your booty up versus do that like cat position so that that's going to really open up the bottom. Now you can also bring up the head of the bed and really push using the top of the bed to lean on. This is a great labor position as well, but you can, that's like sort of a supported position, especially if you have an epidural or your nurse feels comfortable with you pushing in this position.
Thanks everyone for being with me here today. I am here to remind you that you have options. Whether you have an epidural or not, you have limited mobility or not, you don't necessarily just have to push on your back. Although we know it works, whatever's working is really the goal, whatever feels good. Let's protect your pelvic floor, let's change positions, let's create space and movement for that baby to fit through your pelvis. If you want more from me, you can head on over to bundlebirth.com. As you know, I have all sorts of classes over there, including a childbirth class. That's the one, the childbirth class and the coping with labor class to me are foundational classes that everybody really should be taking to understand the full overview of what to expect for your labor and birth. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell, and then until next time, don't forget to flex and flow, and I will see you soon. Bye.